I mean, the stories uh, that you tell are certainly, or that you're bringing forward are certainly, of course, I, I mean, I wouldn't be calling them into question particularly, but I don't think that they're necessarily universal uh, in families who have uh, children with disabilities. Um, for one thing, uh, disabilities, as I mentioned, are acquired more than they are born into society. And therefore, if we have the belief that disability is that which we can eliminate before people enter the world, then that changes the attitudinal environment of um, for people who become disabled after they're born. And of course, this is the major way that people become disabled. Um, there is um, a good deal of what you have just said with which I agree completely. Um, we certainly should, as individuals and as a society, uh, be directing our efforts toward making what is now termed disability less of a disability by every effort, social effort that we can make. But I part company with you at the point where we are asking parents to do that with, with their own their children. children. That is, that do is, you, do as, you a parent, as a parent choose, choose a, child a child who is, who is going, going to confront the society, society as, as it is? And you as parents who are going to confront the society as it is, as part of the effort to make the society better, do you want that to be the goal of your parenting? Or should it be the goal of your life in all the other things that you do in your life? Do you actively want to bring a child into the world in order to ameliorate that social situation? Some parents decide they want to do that. Um, there are a very large number of people that I know who have had more children than they actually want to have in order to make up for, for example, and this is, and this one, is one of the many Jewish couples who feel this way, they have to make up for what what sees to the Jewish population and so they have more children than um, they otherwise might. People make those decisions. People, People make, make the decision to adopt, adopt disabled children. children. Um, but, but the objection that you raise to the practice of you and other disability rights activists raise to the practice of prenatal diagnosis is asking individuals to carry that burden forward for your political in your political interests or in line with your political beliefs. And I don't think that we should do that through the reproductive practice. In fact, I think doing it, trying to do it through the reproductive practice is a form of eugenics. It's a form it's a of saying to these individuals, you must carry that child to term and you must raise that child because I think it's better for society. And that's exactly what we object to in eugenic practices of the Nazis. Um, I'm afraid that you're assuming that because I'm bringing forward these points of view that I am advocating for uh, changes in policies or laws to outlaw selective abortion. And I'm not making that argument at all. I'm making an argument for bringing forward different kinds of understandings about what it means to be human and to do that through education and through the kinds of conversations that we're having. Um, I'm not sure what you think disability rights activists believe or don't believe or want or don't want, but um, I want to be clear about that. Um, I am both a feminist and a liberal and I certainly support 
what we think of as reproductive rights, and I understand it as being a very complicated conversation, um, and I want to just make that clear.